Welcome to Outboard Motorbike. As you can hear, it's raining again. That doesn't matter. We've um, reached a stage here where the engine's all by itself because the parts have arrived and it's time to strip it and replace the detonated piston. Starting with just taking it apart, obviously. So, um, see how far we get before we run into trouble. So here's our little power head 20 minutes later, pretty much stripped of all the bits and pieces hanging off the outside. And I think we all know that there's a fine line that runs between efficiency and laziness. And people who know me know that I tend to err on the laziness side. So I don't want to take anything off this motor, I don't have to, to get the piston out and replace it. But um, that little seal housing I have to come off the back because it bolts the top and the bottom. The crankcase is split there. And there's one on the front as well, tucked in behind there. Uh, but to get to it, you need to get the flywheel off, for which you need a puller, which I don't have. So like so many things, I need to seek professional help. Uh, so that's our motor. Here's the bits that we took off. It's a manifold, fan cover with some brackets in it, starter motor, a bunch of wiring that runs down the side of it, a water outlet, um, starter solenoid, and another electrical box, and a fuel pump, which we will use. There you have it. So now with the flywheel loosened, with some professional help, we can take it off. It's just attached now by the magnets in the alternator. So all that lot runs the, uh, the alternator and the spark. Take that off, we can get to the seal behind it and we can split the crankcase. So here's our crankcase with all those coils and stuff removed. Um, that seal housing is supposed to come out, but it doesn't want to. So I'll just leave it there and split the crankcase off the bottom of it. Um, speaking of which, walking down the laziness efficiency line, uh, that's the sort of manifold and reed valve housing. I had hoped to leave that on and take all this off in one piece. But reading my manual, like a good lad, it turns out there are four bolts inside here to hold the crankcase down, so I have to take that off and then that off. There we go, that beautiful thing is the reed valve assembly, which reveals what I guess is the inlet manifold. If you look really carefully down there, you can see things like conrods. So we're getting close. Engine is now upside down, as you can see. I've taken out all the big bolts, which are basically main bearing bolts. Four in there, four there. There's a little half inch bolts around the outside. Given this a thump with a hammer, and I think it's going to come off. Feels like it wants to. Well, there's the oil pump drive. We don't use the oil pump, which is sitting down there. And I guess getting in the way of the crankshaft. Try again. That's the kitty. Put that somewhere clean. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the go. Engine's now rolled over back on its side. And I've kept those two seal housings at either end of the crankshaft to make sure it doesn't fall out. Um, head bolts are off. There it all is. There's our detonated piston. Ready to be replaced. Well, the plot thickens. The reason I thought this thing was detonated was because obviously you got two black chambers there and one clean one. And that rough surface in there, which I thought was eroded through due to detonation, which does happen, is one thing, but the squish area is absolutely still got machining marks in it and is sort of scrupulously clean. 
Um, so I don't think it's detonated at all. That's just the rough surface from the original sand casting. Uh, the exhaust ports are really clean too, indicating that it's had some water in there. And the other cylinder head's the same. So both front cylinders have got this steam cleaned look. And although the, the piston's a bit rattly in the bore, the brand new piston's the same. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So it appears we've had a water leak in the front here, but haven't found it yet. The um, cylinder head sealing surface is perfect on both of them. And it just seals the steel liner, protrudes probably a thou or two from the aluminium and just seals on, on that face with no gasket. So um, if it was blown, you'd see it. So uh, I've got to find where the water's coming from. And we can put it back together. And while we've got this torn apart, one more thing. I think this is called an exhaust manifold or something in outboard world. But the exhaust port, you can see there, blows into the V and uh, blows onto this, this poor old thing and out the back. But um, to avoid putting too much heat in the system, that's, that's water cooled, I'm going to get that bit ceramic coated to uh, keep some heat out of the radiator, give the whole thing a better chance. Well, welcome to the Mercury Piston Show. That's the piston out of number one, what I'm calling number one, which, as I said, doesn't look that bad. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, not detonated. There's the problem. That's the piston out of number three, down the, the one down the bottom on that side. That, that ring's seized in place, uh, scuffed on the bore, rooted, basically. But luckily, um, the piston I bought to replace that one is the same as that one, that way around. So um, that with the new ring, new gudgeons, new rings, new gudgeon, will go into number three bore once I've dressed all the aluminium that's left lying around in there from this mess out of the way and we'll be back in business. It's not a perfect bore but I suppose the worst thing it's going to do is going to blow some smoke. And it's a two-stroke, so who cares? And as to the water leak, if it was a water leak, um, it's all going back together with new gaskets and new seals, so it um, shouldn't be a problem. We'll assume it's gone away. While we've got everything out of the engine here, I just thought I'd show you this, which is really cool. It's our beautiful little Conrod bolts. Oh, beautiful little Conrod bolt, nice piece of engineering which we take out to split the cap. And there's something really cool here. This conrod is made in one piece when it's um, manufactured, out of powder, metal powder, so it's a sintered conrod, made in all one bit. And there's a little line across there and there machined in. And they get something in there and snap it like that in two and you end up with a fracture surface here where the you end up with a fracture surface here with some little marks in it and it's sort of uh, coarse where the powder is which only fits back together exactly as it came apart which avoids the need for doweling the sort of stuff together and matching it so each cap obviously goes on each rod as it came off back in exactly the same place like so and only fits in one place properly and perfectly but you've got to get them back together obviously in exactly the right place and to make sure you've got it right you get a lead pencil and just drag it across the fracture surface and make sure you can't feel a thing because if you can it's wrong and it'll blow up that's to happen yet and by the by, that's the little needle bearing in the split cage that goes in the in the bottom end, in the big end bearing rather. And it's split obviously so you can put it around the crankshaft and then assemble that around it. Very nice. Now, just before I pop it all together, 
that's the Conrod sitting on the bench with the needle roller little end sitting in there, 29 rollers if anyone cares. And two of these little thrust washers going on either side of there. That little bush just for assembly that gets knocked out and replaced by that, which goes in the piston right the way through and gets replaced by the gudgeon pin when it gets tapped in. The piston's going to go in front of the heat gun to warm it up. Uh, gudgeon pin, wrist pin, whatever it's called, uh, is in the freezer to tell it be minus 18 degrees and hopefully together go together nicely. And this thing, wonderful thing lent to me by a bloke by the name of who goes by the name in my household of Peter Mercury is a, a piston insertion tool. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And that's my method of um, putting oil on everything when you're putting it together. A load of um, two-stroke oil and a paintbrush. Everything nice and wet before it goes together.